I'm depressed. Yep, yeah, that's right, depression. It sucks. It makes you spend the entire day in a foggy haze of emotionless, cloudy, dejected, self-absorbing misery. And it can often feel like there is nothing that will pull you out of it. Everyone goes through it differently, of course, but for me, I push back at everything. I fight everything off, good or bad. Looking at the past, everything is a disaster, while sat staring into a future I had previously mapped out in my head and seeing nothing but a black void of confusion and fear. I simply refuse to accept anything positive as anything other than a temporary blip that will inevitably crumble into dust and have me balled upon the sofa staring into nothingness. That's a fun way to start a video, isn't it? With this state of mind firmly locked into place, I decided it was time to go back and look at a childhood favourite. One whose name kept waving in and out of existence in my mind. How dare you. One whose name kept waving in and out of existence in my mind. A game that I could only really remember as that one where you were an elephant and there was a big dragon in it. Amazingly, typing that exact description into Google gave me the name. So, gentlemen and a handful of ladies, welcome to... It's Riddler's Den! It, it's a childhood favourite! Even though I... I don't, I don't remember that much about it. I just kind of remember the dragon. This will be, this will be good, right? It's a, it's a childhood favorite. This will be good. You work 12 hour days, you come home depressed, you play fucking video games and then you fall asleep. What was my last video called? Is this the worst puzzle game? That was, that was what my last video was called. Well, I jumped the gun there, didn't I? Riddler's Den is like nothing I've ever come across before. People complain about games like Myst for being too difficult, or even singular puzzles like the classic goat bullshit from Broken Sword, if you know you know. But Riddler's Den isn't just a puzzle game. It's a big cauldron of all the things that absolutely drive you to exhaustion. And I'm going to outlay each and every one of those things. To exhaustion! Firstly, the game itself has you playing as Trunky the Manlephant, which, let's be honest, is excellent. Look at him, he's adorable. Your goal here is to enter the Riddler's Den, find the Golden Tusk, and return it to the great golden god Gregogo. Again, 10 out of 10. Solid start. We're on to a winner. The next part of the instructions, however, begin to explain the inventory system, and you'll be forgiven for thinking that this is the riddle in Riddler's Den. It's not. It's just one small part of the convoluted madness of Riddler's Den. So let me read this as is written. An object may be placed in each pocket, simply by moving against the object and pressing one of the empty pocket keys. One, two, three, or four. If the pocket is full, then an object may be dropped by pressing the appropriate pocket key. Some objects may be used by placing them in pocket four and by pressing the use key. In certain circumstances, it is possible to use the object in pocket four on or with the object in pocket three. One special case requires an object to be picked up and placed in pocket one, two, or three, but can only be used if the contents of pocket four are correct. It's a riddle. Imagine beginning a game and just trying to keep this instruction in your head at all times. Just trying to remember that somewhere in the game there's potentially one or two or three or four objects that might combine together and they'll have to be in the correct pocket if you want to get it to work. This is already exhausting, and I've not even started playing yet. It also goes to show that the instructions for this game are absolutely vital. Not just for this part of the instructions, but for the next segment too. Because in order to solve any of the puzzles in Riddler's Den, you have to read the riddle that is in the manual, and then just sort of guess the answer to half of them. That riddle goes like this. Dream scenes are realized when you boldly enter the Riddler's Den. Once in, the way back is blocked. The door is now securely locked. If a gold door bars your way, you need not hang around all day. Take a key from the right pocket, should you wish to unlock it. A river, a torrent, washes past, leaving no way to go at last. Treasures from caverns dark and dank, you must deposit in the bank. I'm going to stop there because that's just three verses of an eight-verse riddle poem, and I've got to be honest with you. I don't get the chance to see 99% of these answers because I'd already become too pissed off to continue playing after roughly three, three puzzles. Call me a quitter if you like, I call it bettering myself. We're not done complaining about the pre-game yet though because there's another pretty major issue with the game and that's one of readability. One of the most important things to get right in any game, not just a puzzle game, 
is readability. You have to make sure that your player knows what things are within the game, especially relevant when we're working in the early 8-bit era. There's not a great deal of pixels to accurately portray whatever it is you're trying to communicate. On first jumping in and picking up a few items, I realized that I didn't quite understand what 50% of them were meant to be. This is a bottle of TCP, obviously, and this looks like some sort of dragon statue, but what the hell is this half of? A plate? And is this a rock? How are you supposed to know what any of this is? Well, you're supposed to sit at the main menu and I guess either slowly memorize all of the items it lists and describes or write slash draw them all in a little notepad so that you know what it is you're actually dealing with when you get it in the game. This is, I'm sure you'll agree, not exactly the most user-friendly of interfaces. And before I'd even attempted to solve a single one of the game's puzzles, I already fully understood why I never got anywhere with the game as a child. It took until replaying it to fully jog my memory here, but this is what I remember of the game from when I was younger. This starting screen with our beautiful little manlephant and his terrifyingly real god just sat there watching him. This bank, which received precisely zero deposits. This giant flashing gargoyle whose puzzle I was convinced I'd worked out with the help of my dad, but no progress had ever been made. We'll come back to that one. And finally, this. Now let me just settle on this screen for a moment because it's difficult to truly convey what this screen meant to me as a child. This was wondrous and very few Spectrum games really catapulted you into the realm of wondrousness. It stands well apart from a lot of the other screens in the game which are just the same basic maze layouts you'd find in a thousand other games. This screen alone has been lodged in my brain for the past 30 plus years. It's a screen that kept me loading the game back up again just to try and figure it out. It's a screen that blocked me off from the rest of the game. Beyond this tale was just an imagined outcome, a totally new area that my brain filled in for me. In my childish world, this dragon could be ridden. It became your best friend, or you fought it with sword and shield, or perhaps it breathed fire and set the world ablaze. In reality, nothing happened with the dragon because nothing happened with the flashing gargoyle, which is really the first puzzle in all of this. You can't bypass the dragon until you've managed to bypass this ugly bugger. And so, 30 years on... Back to square one, gentlemen. Here's what the riddle involving the gargoyle states. A fiery beast guarding a... No, no, that's not that bit. Uh, when, when facing a red... Ri uh, no, no, not that bit either. Uh, if, you, if you if you dug below the... No, uh, no. Uh, you know what? Uh, there isn't a riddle for the gargoyle. This game, all about solving riddles, forgot to put a riddle into the manual for the very first puzzle you need to solve. Lovely stuff. What you actually need to do is go and look at the features section of the instruction manual, which lists a pile of things that the game includes, some of which are hints in themselves. Here you'll find things like an impossible river to cross, or a series of locations with no apparent exit, but most importantly, a fallen, sore-throated gargoyle. Okay, finally we're on to something. We've already found a bottle of TCP and I knew even as a kid that this was the answer because my dad chugged this shit like no one else whenever he had a sore throat. There is not a moment in my life where I don't smell TCP and instantly think of my dad stinking out the bathroom with this disgusting stench of chemicals. So, if I'd worked it out then, and I've worked it out now, what's the issue? Well, it just doesn't work. No matter if I put it in pocket one, two, three, or four, drop it on the floor, think good thoughts about it, whatever it is I actually try and do with this broken piece of shit, nothing in the scene changes. So I gave up. I gave up because I know my sanity is worth more than this game's budget price, and I went to check on the RZX archive playthrough to see what I was doing wrong. Can you guess what I was doing wrong? You can't. You can't guess what I was doing wrong. I was doing nothing wrong. The game is what's wrong. The gargoyle has a sore throat. The TCP is the answer, but it's not the whole answer. The whole answer involves climbing inside the developer's head and reading his thoughts, because in order to get this solution to work, you have to drop the TCP into the top right-hand corner of the screen, making the gargoyle move toward it, possibly killing you with his wonky hitbox, 
But regardless, you'll no doubt forgive me for hating everything in my life right now. 30 years I had the answer in my hand, and there is absolutely zero satisfaction in finally realising what the issue was. At the very least, with this being the first puzzle, it gave me fair warning that the rest of the game was going to be horrendously convoluted. It automatically told me that the game was just going to be bullshit. And I was right. It took just two more puzzles to finally push me over the edge and just give up even bothering. The first, this spider and the attached riddle. You happen across a cold giant spider who waits for some kind soul to find her. As she shivers in her lair, a many-armed coat may warm her there. This is quite a sneaky one because there is, in fact, a coat to be found in the game, a silk coat, but this isn't the answer you're looking for because this game applies logic to nothing. What you actually want is a shield, or in other words, a coat of arms. Because, sure, cold, cold spiders always try to warm themselves on a nice shield. That makes perfect fucking sense. Regardless, solution in mind, but no idea what to do with it. Again, using it in slot 4 does nothing, so RZX Archive is the place to go. And I'll just, I'll just let this one play out. How? Why? How and why? Who is supposed to work these things out without hours and hours of fannying around being absolutely bored off their tits? It's exhausting to even think about, and it brings up an important secondary issue I've not even touched on yet. The game constantly wants you to die! So you have health, which depletes pretty consistently because enemies are placed in horrible tight spaces and move around in random patterns. To coincide with this, if you spend too long on a single screen, and not even that long, may I add, then a whirlpool thing appears and spits a ball out that fires around the screen. Again, depleting your energies, it batters you to death. Certain enemies, like the spider, the gargoyle, or even the dragon's tail, will kill you just by touching them. Or, at least, touching near them. Good luck keeping your temper down when you accidentally bump into these twats. And finally, if all of that wasn't enough, you've also got a time limit in-game. This timer in the top corner tells you what time of day it is, and you only have a certain number of days before your adventure is just over. Which, let's be honest, you're going to be long dead before that happens, but still, Jesus Christ, give me a break and let me spend some amount of time just to think. You might be thinking all this stuff I've mentioned would be enough to break me anyway, but it was actually one more specific puzzle that just had me pack up my trunk and say goodbye to the circus, and it was this river. You may remember that the features section of the instructions manual states, an impassable river to cross, which isn't particularly helpful, and the riddle attached to it doesn't really give you much to go on either. A river, a torrent, washes past, leaving no way to go at last. So that's, that's basically two bits of information that say the river is impassable, but you need to pass it. Okay, I guess. Thanks. So let's have a look at the items in the game, shall we? Hmm, I guess a, a battle axe could be used to chop down a tree, maybe? Or, or, or maybe the little duck? I could, I could float the little duck on the river and walk across that. Or a coil of rope! I could, I could maybe use that to tightrope walk across or... or some, something along. No! I want you to sit yourself down. Not not that you will be standing. If you're standing up while watching my videos, please don't do that. That's fucking weird. But anyway, sit yourself down and watch because I want you to feel the same level of confusion I felt as I studied the RZX archive footage of this puzzle. Just, just sit there, soak it in, and try to work out what's happening. Yeah. Set 
fucking willy. Is, is this the face you were making? Okay, so if you're unclear, because it took me a solid minute, the solution to this puzzle is time. The river dries up at a specific time. I don't know how you're supposed to know that. I'm not even sure the developer cared. But this is the puzzle solution that made me say, you know what, it's not worth it. I'm depressed enough as it is. How I could waste any time on this game as a child, I do not know. I will never know. What was I doing with my life? What am I doing with my life now? Uh, we are we are done. I am gone. It took a few days of scratching my brain before I realized that Riddler's Den, my old reaction to it, and the current reaction to it, is not altogether surprising. So forgive me a moment for waxing vaguely philosophical and being uncharacteristically heartfelt toward a game I never want to spend another second with. It's all about the dragon. This singular screen, one which adorned the cover of the game and the screenshot segment, which... why wouldn't it? It's magnificent, it truly is, but on a personal level, it's this dragon that brought me back. It's what made me remember the game. It's still the only screen I reached during this current playthrough that actually put a smile on my face. And it's ultimately the only thing that's truly relevant because I think my reaction to it, both then and now, is important. You see, the dragon barred the path to progression and as a child, there was a sense of wonder about what led beyond the dragon's tail. A whole world mapped out in my head. A game that didn't exist locked away behind a puzzle solution I never got to solve. It didn't matter that I didn't solve that puzzle because that singular moment of being there, sat in the dragon's den, was enough to keep me inflated. It made me feel alive just to be in there. And now, as an adult, I sit there with the dragon and I look at its tail swishing back and forth and I know beyond the scaly whiplash there's just more bullshit. There's nothing to enjoy over there. It's just more screens of bumping into annoying enemies or being annoyed that a gargoyle won't accept my disgusting throat remedy. Everything beyond the dragon looks bleak and confusing and I sometimes just don't know what the solution is. And it's taken me a while to realise that it doesn't matter what's beyond the dragon. The dragon is the important bit. Dragon is where I am, and what's beyond the tail will come one day, but it's not here now. I don't need to catastrophize the screens beyond it, nor do I need to imagine a world of wealth and happiness beyond it. I can just appreciate the dragon for what it is. One day at a time, step by step. Enjoy what you've got, and stop thinking about what isn't here yet. Enjoy the past for what it was, but don't let it dictate the future. Anyway, non-metaphorically speaking, I did get past the dragon's tail and it is more of the same bullshit, but that doesn't quite fit the theme and message I was going for, so ignore that bit. I was trying to inspire positivity and hope, not the grim reality that everything in the future is going to be fucking shit. That's not inspiring at all, not when you think about it. Riddler's Den is a weird old bag of shite, but I do have to give it some credit for at least trying something a little bit off-kilter to standard puzzle games. If it wasn't for the awkward way in which you solve the solutions, the riddles themselves are a nice idea and flesh out a game that would otherwise be pretty lifeless and completely without context. The time-based elements, while impossible to actually understand based on the zero information provided, are actually quite neat, and it's a shame more things didn't include that. That being said, I think having an overall time limit for the game was a little short-sighted, as were the constant enemies, and mostly I, I just hate it. But ultimately, I can see what they were going for, and I have to respect the fact that 30 years on, the mystery of just what this game actually wanted from me was still lodged in my brain. But don't, but don't play it. And don't be depressed. That's my... My message for the day.